Uh, um, don't know if you can tell I'm back in my old office. Um, forgot to bring my tripod to work with me today, so I didn't have a place in the blank, the empty room where I usually set up. I didn't have a place to put my camera. So I'm trying back in my office where I have the the voggy view. Um, I read another article. <laughs> This one was in Time Magazine, um, the online version. How complementary cancer therapies can increase risk of early death. And by complementary cancer therapies, they're talking about the use of herbal medicine, um, what's it, what did they say? Nutrients, herbal remedies, and other so-called natural supplements. Which I do tend to believe in to an extent I don't think they're a cure-all, so this was interesting to me. Um, so I guess first let's go through the, the article, um, which says, you know, it starts out, people diagnosed with cancer have a multiple, multitude of treatment options. Gosh, am I going to have another one of those days? Um, many are standard therapies that have been well studied um, to improve their chances of surviving their, di their disease or avoiding recurrence. So, you know, chemo, radiation, blah, blah, blah. Um, but people are increasingly also folding in complementary medicine um, into their cancer treatment regimes, which you know, when I was first diagnosed with cancer, I had people telling me um, use, oh gosh, it was an oil, I can't remember the name of it, but they said use this oil because, you know, this is like the cancer fighting oil, it's an aromatherapy oil. And it's like, how is aromatherapy going to cure your cancer, really? I mean, <sighs> but there are things that can help you through feeling better. I understand that. I don't think there's an aromatherapy that's going to cure your cancer. My opinion. Um, now it says, while these are not nearly as well studied as conventional therapies like surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, Many people rely on them because they believe they can improve their chances of surviving the cancer or keeping recurrences at bay. I think a lot of people also rely on them because they're natural. They want to go the natural, they don't want to go invasive, they don't want to put toxins, you know, like chemo, in chemotherapy, you don't want to put the toxins through your body, but it's the toxins that kill the cancer. You know, so, and I understand that. There was a time I had a, a breast cancer scare several years ago, I think four years ago now. And I, at the time, I said, I was actually in a very deep depression at the time. I saw no reason to have any kind of chemotherapy, any kind of surgery. I, I was just like, whatever happens, happens. If I die, I die. I don't care. And um, so at that point in time, I would not have gotten chemotherapy. I would not have had surgery. Even just a lumpectomy, I would not have had. Um, I, there's no way I would have had a mastectomy. Even now, I don't know if I'd have a mastectomy. I don't know. But um, I would not have put chemo into my body. There was just no way I was going to do all this invasive stuff. But at the time, I also really didn't care. I didn't give a crap whether I lived or died. And so, you know, I was that deep in depression. But my life has changed. I turned around when I was told this time, yes, you do have cancer. It's not just a scare, you have cancer. And it was like, okay, tell me about chemo. Tell me about the surgery. Let me make an informed decision. I don't know that I was informed really that well when I made my decision, but 
<laughs> you know, I, I was more open to what the future would hold rather than here and now. So anyway, now that I've gone off on that tangent. Okay, so in a new study <laughs> published in JAMA Oncology, and JAMA is the, the Journal of American Medicine, I forget what the whole title is, but it's like the medical journal, you know, that's like the top tier that people go to. So, in, or that doctors go to. In a new study published in JAMA Oncology, which I also have that, researchers say that that may not be the case. Okay, I should read that over because that sounded really bad. In a new study published in JAMA Oncology, researchers say that may not be the case. Um, Dr. Skylar Johnson, chief resident in therapeutic radiology at Yale School of Medicine and his colleagues analyzed data, blah, blah, blah. Four common cancers, breast, prostate, lung, colorectal. Okay. Um, some of those people used only conventional medicine and what they're talking about here, conventional medicine is surgery, chemotherapy, radiation. Um, and complementary medicine is the nutrients, herbal remedies, and natural supplements, you know, aromatherapies, acupuncture, um, anything that's not considered a traditional therapy. Okay, so um, some of the people used only conventional medicine, and some used conventional treat, at least one conventional treatment and one or more complementary medicine strategies. Um, and let's see, these included IV, oral, and topical therapies made up of vitamins, minerals, or herbal supplements. So they found that people who added complementary medicine had twice the, twice the risk of dying during a nine-year study compared to people who only used conventional treatment. But, there is a but. <laughs> People who choose complementary medicine also tend to deny use of conventional treatment. Or they don't use it to its full advantage. For instance, they maybe instead of getting the six or eight chemos that they're supposed to, they only get two. Um, so they're more likely to refuse surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, and hormone therapy compared to people who did, did not use the complementary medicine. So it's the avoidance of recommended treatment that is killing them really, not the, the use of the herbs and the, the natural medicine. Um, but now, on the same hand, um, let's see, where does it say? Among people who did all of their conventional treatments and complementary medicine therapies, there was no difference in survival. So if you do all of your um, chemo, all of your surgery, all of your radiation, it doesn't necessarily help or hinder if you add the natural or the um, complementary medicine. Um, but there is also another but. Um, because complementary approaches are considered natural, therefore they're believed to be safe, but they can contain biologically active ingredients that can interact with chemotherapy and other cancer treatments, making them either less effective or even more toxic and de detrimental to health. So you really have to watch that. And um, some doctors don't know, you know, they think, okay, it's natural, it couldn't hurt. But, you know, and it might make somebody feel more comfortable about having chemo if they know that they're taking this other natural supplement, you know, but it might actually affect the chemo somehow. So that's kind of scary. Um, so then, let's see, it seems like there was something else in here that I highlighted. Um, 
Oh, it was just the same thing. Patients who chose complementary medicine were more likely to refuse at least one component of, what did we call it, um, conventional treatment and had a higher risk of death than patients who did not use complementary medicine. After adjusting for delays and refusal of conventional treatment, complementary medicine was not associated with an increased risk of death. Okay, so it's not, you know, it's not necessarily the complementary medicine, the herbs, the natural supplements, blah, blah, blah. It's the mindset, I guess, that, um, okay, I'm taking this herbal supplement, so I don't need the radiation, I don't need the hormone therapy, you know, whatever, and that's what gets you. So, if you are dead set on a complementary medicine, an herbal sub, you know, something herbal, natural, what have you, talk to your doctor. If your doctor isn't knowledgeable in this area, find another doctor. Um, because if that's something that makes you feel better, that does help. I mean, we, you know, it helps your mental. So, see, the, the, and there are herbs that will help you deal with side effects. I do get that. Um, there are certain um, aromatherapy oils that I would use when I was getting stressed, when I was feeling nauseous when I was, you know, certain things and I, boy, lighting, um, all of a sudden it's getting brighter outside. So the side is, <laughs> um, yeah, that's not gonna work. Anyway, um, that's why I don't film in here anymore. <laughs> but anyway, so do talk to your doctor before you start taking any Kind of supplements or anything I don't think aromatherapy oil is going to hurt you know it's an inhalant it's not like you're snorting it but you know it's something you're just breathing in naturally it's uh, you know unless you're snorting it who knows with people but if you're going to take a, a supplement of any kind or um, I don't think acupuncture would necessarily harm but who am I to know I'm not a doctor please remember that you know, any kind of, or, you know, here in Hawaii, we have Chinatown, you know, big Chinese population. A lot of people so totally believe in the Chinese herbs and medicines, and it is a very big business. And so, um, a lot of people will go to that for, for anything and everything that ails them. And... I'm just saying be careful with the combinations if you're going to do chemotherapy, radiation, hormone supplements, um, or hormone therapy, you know, that's what you have to watch out for. So if it's something that you are very interested in, talk to your doctor. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> As I've said several times, that's all I'm saying. And so I'm probably going to get out of this light because it's really, really bad. But if you have any questions or comments, miss, you know, make a comment down below. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell if you haven't already. And the bell is so you get notifications when there's a new video out. And as always, like the video. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.